Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about this Primary Arms GLX 1 to 10 by 24 first focal plane. Okay, so um, this goes, it's an LPVO, it goes down to one power. Uh, it goes all the way up to 10 power. It's first focal plane, so that the sub tensions, the auto ranging, bullet drop, mill lines, they're going to be accurate in all magnifications. Okay. Uh, and that's the reason why I got this scope, because I have the SLX version of this, which is second focal plane. But I work in all magnifications, so I needed the subtensions, auto ranging, bull drop to be accurate in all magnifications, which is why I got the GLX version. So this is like an $800 scope. The GLX, the SLX one is a $450 one. Um, and I've had that for two years. It's been working great. But because I always need to... Because, because I'm constantly moving back and forth on the magnifications, it's not working out for me. Um, so I'm probably going to sell that off. I'm going to sell it for 350 If anybody's in Northeast Pennsylvania and you're interested, let me know. Come over here. Um, you know, we'll zero it in, put it on your rifle, take it home with you, okay? Um, so, but today I want to talk about the, the this scope and the SLX version, okay? Right? Uh, with the auto ranging being in meters versus yards okay so what's what's the difference okay um does it matter uh because a lot of people are like well i'm used to working in yards this is in meters or that you know um so first let's take a look at some differences so 50 yards is i'm sorry 50 meters is 55 yards 100 meters 110 yards 200 meters 220 yards 300 meters 330 yards 400 meters, 440 yards, 500 meters, 550 yards, okay? So, uh, for one thing, it's really easy to remember because basically you got 11, 22, 33, 44, 550, you know, so it goes up in, in, in a pattern that, that's easy to remember, okay? So, even though the instructions on this and the SLX version I have say to, you know, basically talk about zeroing it at 50 meters, I zero at 50 yards, okay? So, when I zero at 50 yards, on the bullet drop side, everything basically essentially falls into line, okay? Uh, we're talking about very small differences. Um, and here's the thing, even with, with the bullet drop, uh, whether you have the Raptor or you're using the, the mill grid, this is the, the mill grid version. And the way it works out, here, let me show you guys on the, on the mill grid. Here, try to get close here. The top of the spine is gonna be your 300. That's where you, you, know, you get your 50 yard zero at the Chevron. Then the top of the spine is 300. First line will be 400. Next line will be 500. That line there is 600. If you true it out over here at 300 yards, all of the, all the, the, the 400, 500, and 600 are gonna be close enough, okay? And when I say close enough, basically, if you're aiming here, we're talking about hitting a man-sized target, okay? So someplace on a man-sized target. Um, you know, uh, with, when it comes to bullet drops and, uh, and and trying to or trying to use a mill grid for for bullet drop, first of all, there's different. You know, there's what really matters is the velocity of the bullet. Okay, so you've got. I mean, even with a 55 grain, the velocity can. I've measured it on different ammunition. 55 grain on some of them, 3,000 feet per second. On others, all the way go all the way up to 3,200 feet per second. So there's like a 200 foot per second variance. Uh, in 55 grain ammunition that I have that I have actually measured through a chronograph, and that's just the 55 grains. So you, then, if you look at the 62 grains, 77 grains, 45 grains, you, you know the velocities are going to be all over the place. And then, of course, you've got barrel lengths. Okay, are you are you shooting a 16 inch, a 20 inch, uh, you know, a 10 inch? So, um, so when it comes to trying to get a bullet drop, we're looking at at, at trying to get on a man sized target. We're not trying to hit a dime at 100 yards okay uh you know th this is a combat reticle for being able to hit get on a man-sized target really quickly and t and take those shots that's what this uh combat reticle is designed for that's why they call it acss advanced combat sighting system okay uh, by the way i don't get paid by primary arms or acs or any of those characters uh, i paid for this as i pay for everything okay um which is why you get the type of reviews from me that you guys get, okay? Um, you know, basically, I do reviews the way I like doing reviews, not the way somebody might be paying me to do reviews. Um, so, so on the bull drop, 
is it, if you know you're going to be hitting, doing most of your shooting at, let's say, 500 yards, then, yeah, you got to make sure that, you know, the 500, you basically you would chew it out at 500 yards, okay? And then everything else is less important, okay? I chew it out at 300 yards, at the top of the spine, and then everything else pretty much falls, falls into place for me, okay? Um, now, as far as the auto ranging, right? Let's talk about the auto range because the auto ranging is also in meters, okay? Um, so how much, uh, you know, you got the, if you look at the wings over here, right? So basically this is what you see when you zoom in at 10 power, that in one power, it looks like a duplex reticle with a, uh, uh, with a circle dot essentially, okay? Uh, so it's good. They give you both a duplex and, a, and a, like a, a 65, well, it appears to be something like a circle dot. Um, but when you zoom in, you see this and you've got this wing ranging system over here. So you put the foot at the bottom, head to the top, or you put the, the belt at the, uh, at, the line, at, at the middle here and the head goes to the top. Um, so this auto ranging, and also they, they give you two ways to auto range. You can, also, you can also auto range on the width of the shoulders on these lines over here. Okay, so, so there's two ways to auto range. So this, this uh, auto ranging this, uh, system uh, is based on what they say is the average man at five foot eight inches uh, tall and 18 inches wide, okay? So most people are not exactly average, okay? Um, typically, you're gonna run into everything from five and a half feet tall to, you know, six and a half feet tall, okay? That's, that's pretty typical of what you're going to run into. Uh, width of the shoulders, I mean, you know, I'm 22 inches, okay, width. Um, so, so, so when you're talking about trying to order range, we're not looking for exact measurements. Uh, you're just trying to get a quick idea of what distance somebody is. Are they at 500 yards or are they 300 yards or are they at 200 yards? Okay. Uh, you want to get a quick, you, know, you need to get those shots off fast. And the idea of this advanced combat science system, this ACSS, is that it allows you to get a quick estimate and get your shots off. Now, well, I've actually removed the, well, the scope and I took it out to a location, actually or rather before I mounted on the rifle, I took it out to a location where people were actually moving around. So holding the scope in my hand, I put it on actual people moving around. And uh, first of all, if you're going across shoulders, most people don't stand like this. When you're looking at them, they're probably going to be a little bit off like this, okay? Right? And also as people are moving and their heads bopping up and down, it's not going to be stationary. Their feet are not going to be stationary. So there's always going to be a little bit of up and down movement. Okay. So again, that's the reason, one of the reasons why it doesn't matter if this thing is, if this thing is in meters and you normally work in yards, it's, it's going to be close enough. Now, when it comes to water ranging off of the size of a man, if you're like, okay, could be, could be 400 or could be 500, you always go with the closer distance, right? Because what's going to happen is if you, um, if you ask the, if, 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 if you, if somebody's actually at, let's say, uh, 400 yards and you get a new way, estimate them at 500 yards, well, the bullets are going to go over the heads. Okay. But if it's reverse, right? Like, let's say somebody is actually at 400 yards and you guess them at 300 yards. Well, instead of the bullets hitting here, they're going to hit someplace down here. Okay. So that's why when somebody's moving around or turned a little bit to the sides, and you're not sure at exactly like you're like it could be this or it could be that you go with the closer distance okay uh so this way you can get your bullets on target and if any if anything they're just going to hit a little bit lower uh versus uh in the in, you know center mass okay uh, this one I only had for a couple of weeks but i've had the slx version which is the same reticle okay uh and i've had that for two years and like I said, both, you know, well, more the other scope, this I've only done once. The other one, I've done it multiple times. Take it off the rifle, go out to a location, um, you know, with the scope and also with a range finder, you know, put, you know, put the scope on somebody, see, you know, calculate, use the auto ranging to see what distance they're at, you know, pick up the range finder, put it on them, you know, and I'm, I'm usually there, right? I'm, 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 I'm usually, I mean, it works. I mean, it just works. Okay. Um, why would you want to use the scope versus a range finder? Well, here's the thing, a range finder works great if you're in an open field, right? But if you're like out in the woods or there's lots of obstacles in between, um, like if I try to look at a target back there, that's like 200 yards back, I'm gonna probably bounce off one of the trees that's, cl that's closer 
and it's going to give me a closer reading than what I'm actually looking at. Okay, so that's that's a deal with range finders. They, uh, you know, if you've got lots of things between you and what you're looking at, um, it's 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 usually not going to give you a true reading. It's going to bounce off of the, the closest thing. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, so that, that's that's the deal. Uh, don't don't worry that this is in meters and that uh, you like to work in yards. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, the two are close enough. And for what we're trying to do here, which is get shots on target fast, I mean, this is this is the the best. I mean, these ACSS designs are really the best reticles for a combat situation, okay? Um, and I've looked at a lot of different reticles. I mean, the reason why I use primary arms is not so much because of the hardware, even though I think the, 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 the hardware, as far as the scope, the glass, all that stuff is good. The reason why I use primary arms is because of the reticles, okay? I like scopes that have combat reticles. Okay, um, it you know it just it just because the scope gives the rifle a personality. So if you've got a scope that gives you auto ranging off of the size of a man, okay, you know, not a soda bottle, right? Not you know bowling pins off the size of a man. It's obviously a combat scope. So I I really like the flavor right the flavor that that the primary arms uh scope have okay um other interesting point that i had not noticed before right uh is that the that this this scope is made in japan okay one and again one of the uh, commenters pointed out now the reason why i didn't even notice that is because i'm not a glass snob okay uh the reason why i bought this scope is because I really like the reticle and I, I needed a first focal plane version of it. I didn't care where it was made. Um, I did notice though that when I picked up, once I mounted the scope and I was looking through it, I noticed that the, the first thing I noticed was that the, the walls of the scope were really thin. Okay, so it's very, it's not exactly like my PLX, right? Because I got the PLX C, it's not as thin as the PLX. But it comes close. So, so this scope um, is a lot. I think I'm a glasses. This scope is a lot like if you get a GLX scope, it's a lot closer to a PLX, right? PLX scopes being like fifteen hundred dollars. So this eight hundred dollar GLX is a lot closer in quality, I think, to a fifteen hundred dollar PLX versus let's say like the five hundred dollar SLX. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's got really. I mean, the, the glasses, again, I'm not a glass snob. In fact, most of my, the, the glass on most of my scopes usually gets smudged up pretty good. This one's still clean because I uh, haven't had it that long, haven't had a chance to get it that dirty yet. Um, the way I tell people to test this out is put it on your left side and come up, right, and see how fast you can get on target. Okay, and then, sh you know, do like unconventional positions. I mean, when you start doing unconventional positions where you're trying to line it up like this, you know, that's where you really see, yeah, listen, nothing beats a red dot, right? So red dot with magnifier is still like my main go-to. You know, this is more like a special purpose type of thing. Right, I'm not saying special purpose here like as as in the cliche-ish rifle build. I'm saying special purpose. Like I'm, if I'm going to pick up a scope with um, with an LPBO on it, okay, uh, I'm planning to do a lot more than just do CQB stuff, right? I'm planning to use all the features in the reticle, the range estimating, the bullet drop. If I just want magnification, I'm just gonna go with a red dot with a magnifier, okay? I have a 6X magnifier, works great. I've been out to 500 yards with that, okay? So if I'm gonna put like a pound and a half on top of the gun, you know, it's gotta do a lot more. I want the auto ranging, I want mill lines, you know, I want wind holes, I want bullet drops, I want leaders, I want, I want all that other stuff, okay? Um, so, uh, there are my thoughts on that. And again, main point of this video, uh, this scope being in meters, versus you normally working in yards, no difference. If you normally zeroing your rifle at 50 yards, zero this in at 50 yards like I did, okay? It makes no difference, okay? Uh, I had it out to 200 yards, you know, I got my impacts at 200 yards, you know, like 50 yards zero, got my second impact at 200 yards, works just fine, okay? Um, so drop some comments below. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Hey everyone, I wanted to give you guys a close look at this reticle. So this is the reticle in uh, 1X. So as you can see, this is a really great reticle. It gives you the, the, the thick crosshairs, and it gives you this outer circle 
uh, to help you get on target faster, okay? So when you zoom in, you start seeing some of the details. All right, so let's see what we got there. We got Iron Man, okay? Let's zoom up. And let's see where we can match this guy. So this guy, we can kind of see head to foot. All right, he's at 400 yards. Okay, so with him, I would use that that first horizontal line and you can see how that also matches up to the width of his shoulders and and that's where I would take my shots right there pew 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 now because this is first focal plane because remember we're using the bullet drop now right we're using that first that first line but let's say I wanted to kind of keep a, an eye on spider-man over there on the edge right all right so I can I can kind of cover both targets by zooming back all right, so, that, so that's that's the great thing about the first focal plane uh, scope. I, I can use my bullet drop, but I can also, like, not be in full magnification, okay? So let's go to a different target there. All right, so what we got there? It looks like Captain America. So the way he's sitting, we're going to have to go from the waist up because, because his legs are, like, in a weird position. So legs up, he's at, at 500 yards. Okay, so 500 yards, I would use the second line there. It also matches up to his shoulders. I'm, I'm, I mean, I haven't bagged the back of the rifle. I'm not like super steady right now, but that would be right there. Like pew, 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 pew. Okay. And then let's see, I got another dude over here. So he's at the same distance, 500 yards. So the cool thing is first focal plane, I can zoom back and I can actually see like both of these guys in my in my field of view so i can let's say cover this guy but also see that guy and i can like get like i, I can have my bolt drop on the 500 yard hold and i can still see the other guy on the other side over there right in my in, in you know at the far end of my scope so so that this is the reason why i had to have a first focal plane scope okay if you're not doing these kind of things, yeah, sure, you don't need it. You can go to second focal plane scope. But if you want to be able to do these things, um, you, you gotta have a um, you gotta have a first focal plane scope. So, other great thing about this is that it's got mill lines built into this reticle. Actually, let me pause you guys for a second. I'm gonna put it on another target out there. Hold on. All right, so I'm gonna zoom you guys back. All right, so I put two other targets out there okay so i've got what appears to be a car that's hiding so great thing about this type of reticle we're not just limited to auto ranging off of the size of a man so most cars are about six foot wide okay so if you zoom in, if you look on this at the bottom of this mill grid they give you dots that they can use now I'm looking through some tinted glass, so it's a little hard for me to see the dots. I can see them fine without the tinted glass. Um, I can see, actually I can kind of see the dots, but it's actually a lot easier for me to transition to these lines over here, okay? So um, it's just bigger. So just to get a rough estimate on that car over there, right, uh, which is about two mils wide, right, the calculation that I would do, okay, um, is uh it's two mils wide so it's two times six i'm sorry hold on no no it's six so the, the average uh width of a car is six foot so six times 12 inches times a conversion factor 27.77 uh divided by the two mils uh puts that car at about a thousand yards okay so that's that's what a car that is two mils wide would be right Okay, so if we look next to it, now these two, this we see a truck. Now these two things are not proportional, right? Because these are toys. But I measured that truck um, at about uh, one, two, three mils wide. Okay, so three mils wide. Most trucks are about um, eight foot wide. Okay, so the calculation would be eight times twelve times twenty-seven point seven seven. Uh, divided by the three that truck would be at uh, 888 yards okay now the um one of the things i love about this this reticle 
is if you look out here, right, it, you can use these dark lines. And this has like this is especially useful if you've got something that's moving. Like the go I because I can just line this up and I can see that okay, I can see the five, it's about half a five, and I could say that's I would guess that's let's say about two and a half mils, right? Um, that's what I would guess that. So I, I really like those dark lines, right? You can also do the height over here, right? So you can do the lines here. So I could say that, yeah, it's about two and a half mils tall, okay, on that truck. Um, and I found this to be especially useful if you're trying to mill out trucks that are like moving on a highway or cars, you know, using this, using these thick outer lines to get a quick rough measure as to how thick or wide something or tall something is, right? Because you can come down here and get the height as well. So that's one, and, and again, this is one of the things I absolutely love about primary arm scopes. Um, they're, they're combat minded, okay? This is not the type of scope that, let's say a competition shooter would be using, okay? This is a combat scope for trying to figure out quickly how, how far, you know, how, you know, how far something is and what your, um, what what you need to you know what 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 range you're gonna range it at you know and what holder we're gonna use. Now um, the um, for cars and trucks the the measurement that matters the most to me is four mils because if a truck is at five hundred if a car is at five mils right so five mils would be between that line so that car is a little further back right now it's not at five mils it would have to come all the way up to that line that blue car so. As soon as it comes into five mils, uh, sorry, not four, four, four mils. It's actually four mils. So as soon as it gets inside, in uh, inside that four mils, it's at five hundred yards. Okay, so five hundred yards. Basically, I've covered this on a separate video. I would go to the top of the windshield and start sending my rounds out there. If I'm aiming at the top of the windshield, they're gonna at the, once it crosses five hundred yards, they're gonna start off at the at the bottom of the radiator on the bumper. And as the car comes closer to me, the bullets are going to start climbing, okay? And then when I get to the point that I can see the driver, I'm going to transition to the actual driver. Now, for the truck, because trucks are a little bit bigger, right? They're eight foot wide. Um, so, but the, but the same deal applies there. Once that gets inside of four mils, which is, um, now it's eight foot wide. So with, what ends up happening is with the wider truck, it ends up being 600 yards, okay? So... The truck being a larger target, as soon as that truck gets inside of five mils and he's at 600 yards, I would start shooting at the top of the windshield, and which the bullets are going to start impacting at the low bumper. And as he closes in on me, they're going to start rising. And then when he gets at about 200 yards, basically, you know, I'm still aiming at the, at the windshield, so I'm going to be putting, you know, hits on target. I'm just going to transition from the center uh, to, the, to the driver when I can actually see the driver. Okay, so... I, I love this. I love this. Um, this this radical, right? and that's why, like, I had to have this in a uh, in the first vocal plane.